Should you need assistance during the conference call, please raise hand from the participants tab on the screen. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand over the conference to Mr. Sandeep Kalra. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hope all of you are doing well. Today, we have an important announcement to make. And as we walk through the next few slides, I'll set the rationale for our you know, m and strategy, what we are announcing today and so on. And before we get into what we are announcing today, for those of you who have not been following us for the last few quarters, I just want to give a slight context on where we stand today and then delve into what we are announcing. So as of this point in time, as you would know, possibly that last quarter, we did $199.1 million. Our annualized run rate translates into $796.4 million, which gives, and the trailing 12 month revenue is $701.1 million. We have been talking about our aspirations of being a billion dollar company and beyond. And with that, we have also been talking about our m and strategy, which is basically based on token acquisitions, which would make us smarter, more relevant to the customer base, more relevant to the partners that we work with. Our acquisitions are, if you look at whatever acquisitions we have announced so far, and even the forward-looking strategy is based on capturing the high-growth markets that we play in. And these markets span across you know, domains such as cloud, infrastructure, security, data, Salesforce, and in the industry verticals that we operate in, whether it is the technology companies that we service, the banking financial services companies that we service, or healthcare life sciences. That is broadly the strategy that we have been articulating over the last many quarters. These companies that we look at in terms of token acquisitions are supposed to be either, for example, the acquisition that we did of SCI, making us more smarter in a micro vertical in financial services. In the case of SCI, it was payments. In the case of the earlier acquisition that we did, Capriot, it was an integration side of the house as a service line and so on. So these are to bolster our capabilities or bring adjacent capabilities and to expand our footprint in either a vertical or a geography. So keep that in mind as we walk through what we are announcing today. Now, before we get into the specific, you know, of the acquisition that we have done, I want to walk you through what happened over the last seven to 10 years in the cloud transformation journey of our customers. So if you look at the horizontal you know, technology set, the CIO organization that we work with, you know, that, that's where the earlier things were, the data center side of it, where people used to have on-premise data centers. They moved from on-premise data centers to colo data centers. Over a period of time, people started to experiment with having private clouds. That translated into hybrid clouds where people started adopting one of the hybrid cloud, or one of the public cloud vendors such as Amazon, AWS or Microsoft Azure or IBM or Google Cloud. With time, this translated into people thinking about how to leverage multiple clouds for the sake of not getting logged in with one particular cloud or with respect to you know, the money that they spend on various clouds being more competitive on that. It also came across that if you adopted technologies from IBM such as Red Hat and similar technologies from other you know, major hyperscalers, you could possibly build once, deploy over multiple clouds. And that also brought strategic advantage to things. With this journey, you know, obviously it makes it imperative for service providers like us to be not just you know, vested in one particular cloud or the other, but be able to be the trusted partner to our customers and be able to bring them the latest technologies that make them more competitive in their arena. So think about a technology like a Red Hat from an IBM, working with an AWS, Azure, or GCP, or a combination thereof, and be able to move things across these clouds as customers deploy their solutions in different regions of the world where there are different you know, cloud providers who have different capabilities. So that is one of the underlying reasons of our m and strategy in the cloud side. Now, the other thing that is also happening in our world when it comes to the different industry segments that we work in, so earlier, the cloud started off as a horizontal technology. And more and more, if you look at the hyperscalers, whether it is AWS, Azure, GCP, IBM, and the likes, there is more verticalization that is happening. So if you look at you know, Microsoft, Microsoft has launched health-related you know, cloud. So there is a specific offering around healthcare. There's a specific offering around BFSI. Similarly, for other major cloud providers, that is the case. Why is this important? 
it is important for companies like us when we play in these verticals whether it is technology vertical healthcare life sciences or banking financial services that we become more and more aligned to what we can offer to our customers using the power of these hyperscalers so that the customers bring their secret sauce on top of certain services that are exposed by these cloud providers at scale and which makes you know things faster better more competitive from a cost perspective so this is another reason why you know people like us if we have to differentiate ourselves and be known for what we have always been known for the best technology services company working like a niche not working on the traditional erps on mainframes and so on but more on modernization and forward looking whether it is cloud native you know revenue enhancing platforms working with the business buyers or working with the ctos of product companies developing health tech fintech or other tech platforms or even enterprises like large banks insurance companies healthcare providers healthcare pharma companies and so on to build their products and platforms leveraging all these technologies at scale and these are you know more and more you will see the custom development happening but leveraging these platforms and their native services and that's where it beckons for us to get deeper into things now the proof point of how all this panned out even over the last 2 years in the pandemic times it's not a secret for anyone the people who were more digital on their journeys were the ones that survived thrived and for the people who were not they started embarking on their digital transformation journeys and accelerating that the proof point of that is in the consumption revenues or the overall revenues as we see from various hyperscalers if you look at the hybrid cloud revenue from ibm that grew year on year by 20% if we look at the last year if we look at azure azure was one of the biggest market gain you know over the last year in terms of cloud hyperscalers azure grew by about 46% year on year similarly aws and google saw stupendous growth in their revenues now keep in mind this revenue is the consumption revenue what these hyperscalers get what people like us the service providers the market opportunity for us if i was to look at the total addressable market it is multi fold of what these service these cloud hyperscalers make and that is why this is a very attractive market for us and just to remind everyone we have grown very well over the last eight quarters if you look at our journey for the last quarter year on year we were 36% on a growth level most of it was organic small pieces in organic token acquisitions what we are announcing today is to see if we can like we have our relationship with ibm ibm is today at a clip of 100 million dollar plus a relationship for us similarly our attempt is to take microsoft relationship to a fairly big clip and combined with the acquisition that we are announcing we are going to be a fairly significant player in this market as we go along as well similarly if you look at our footprint in the saas based world of salesforce today i'm proud to say our business on salesforce across various clouds across the new things like mulesoft with our capio acquisition and scaling the capio acquisition we are significantly above the 100 million dollar mark as a run rate business so if you were to look at it our attempt here is if you were to look at persistent of the future we would be very relevant in the five key technology players ecosystems so when you talk of an ibm ecosystem you talk of a microsoft ecosystem or an amazon google or a salesforce ecosystem you should see persistent as becoming even more relevant as we grow our revenues our footprint over a period of time and that would be backed up by significant capability that we already have and with bolt on acquisitions like the data glove acquisition that we are announcing today so coming to the data glove acquisition to give you more details on the acquisition so data glove is a company that was started in 2010 it specializes in working around the microsoft technologies mostly around the cloud technologies and their work is mostly around application data modernization cloud advisory services modern workplace services intelligent automation and so on so data glove clocked 48.96 million dollars for the trailing 12 months ended december 2021 they have been growing healthily over the last 2 to 3 years they are a premier consulting services partner to microsoft consulting which is now industry solutions delivering you know different kinds of cloud transformation programs across verticals the footprint for the company spans across americas 
when i say americas it's both north america and central america central america more specifically in costa rica the clientele that they have spans across software high tech verticals bfsi and a small amount around public sector data glove brings to us the experience of having done 100 plus cloud transformation engagements some of them being marquee engagements that microsoft has engaged them with microsoft consulting over the years these span across some of the biggest transformations in the telecom sector as well as the sectors as i talked about the software high tech and bfsi and so on overall if you look at data glove what we are also getting is 700 plus colleagues who are well experienced around cloud technologies 33% of this workforce is around americas which means roughly about 200 plus people roughly 225 to 30 people are between north america and central america we also get to add more muscle in our locations in india across bangalore hyderabad and noida so this is where data glove and our footprint put together makes us even more relevant in the microsoft ecosystem as we go along now the strategic rationale a few of it i have alluded to before if we look at it with this we have said we are launching our microsoft business unit so what we are doing is bring together the microsoft initiatives that we have around cloud data ai security and other services as a company we have significant footprint in other microsoft technologies where for example in development we use dotnet and other technologies that will continue to remain in the verticals this business unit will be responsible for creating capability capacity industry solutions working with our bigger team and microsoft it will also be a true 360 degree relationship which will include our sell to microsoft where we do product development and it services for microsoft sell with microsoft to their customers and marketplace offerings where we will attempt to deliver our services and solutions through microsoft so that is the rationale behind this microsoft business unit and we have the blessings from microsoft as well to embark on this journey it will also strengthen our azure competencies bringing together the competencies that we have across both the organizations whether it is in terms of certifications in terms of go to market partnerships and so on and as i alluded before it will also bolster our vertical and industry capabilities into the entire microsoft ecosystem and hopefully as microsoft creates the wave more and more in different industry verticals we will work with them to enhance their service delivery making sure that we have more azure percolation so it's a win win we have services revenue customers get to accelerate their digital transformation journeys and microsoft gets to gain through azure consumption and the likes so overall you know if i look at it from a industry service line perspective or service line value proposition right from ai ml to computer vision and many other things this is where the acquisition brings more might last but not the least we also from an ip and accelerator perspective we pride ourselves in bringing many frameworks which are reusable frameworks that can accelerate customers digital transformation journey and move to the cloud same with data glove they have a slew of skus as they call it which are basically small reusable components that accelerate the journey to the cloud application modernization and so on in addition to bringing the strong talent that they bring in terms of geography the geographic footprint i have talked about costa rica today as we embark on these cloud and other digital transformation journeys a significant amount of our customers are also looking to have onshore near shore presence in addition to having the traditional offshore presence so costa rica we are getting a good seed and we are intending to grow even more in costa rica and some of our biggest customers whether it is ibm whether it is microsoft whether it is others also have a footprint in costa rica and that should bode well for us as we expand the center these are some of the quotes from various partner and analyst sites so if you look at microsoft we have the blessings right from the microsoft india leadership and we will circulate this presentation we would encourage you to go through these quotes so from right from anand maheshwari who is the president of microsoft india to analysts like parin natarajan who are also you know thought leaders in their own world so there is a significant amount of brainstorming we have been doing with a number of these while deciding our mnd strategy and the kind of targets to go after i am also proud to say we are acquiring a set of leadership in this acquisition so we are getting a set of talented folks who have built this company 
and this is a good mix of people the entrepreneurs who built this company in terms of rajiv and rahul steve is a professional who has done different kinds of infrastructure and other programs has been with the company for long pritham has a long history of working with gsi such as tech mahindra handling relationships with microsoft on go to market for earlier you know roles in his life with the other gsis and so there's a significant strength that we are also getting in terms of go to market experience last but not the least we have david driftmeyer who's joining us from data club who has spent a significant amount of his time building his career at microsoft spending 25 years in business applications so from both uh, solutioning perspective capability perspective senior management perspective this acquisition hopefully will be very attractive for us as we go on with this i will hand over to sunil to walk through the financials of the acquisition and then we will have neeta talk about the vertical and the horizontal solutions of sunil please go ahead yeah hi thanks sandeep and uh, good morning good evening everyone so you would have seen from the stock exchange filings about the total consideration for this transaction at 90.5 million split into 50 million or so upfront and balance in earnouts and retention of which about 35 million is in earnouts and 5 million is in retention so it is 50 35 5 in simple terms to remember in terms of the uh, you can say ev to revenue multiple it reflects 1.95 times the revenue multiple so far as the margin profile of uh, data globe is concerned you would have seen that data globe with its combination of us india and costa rica delivery has a bit of margin which is similar to persistent so this acquisition is neutral with respect to a bit of margin so far as gross margin is concerned it comes slightly lower however the sg and a profile is also lower resulting in similar ebitda the amortization will be to the tune of 75 basis points which will be a headwind for a bit to start with but by leveraging these new capabilities to grow the synergy revenues we expect to create a margin headroom and absorb the ebit impact over a period of time i think you can go to the next slide the uh, data can probably take yani the word you data your own voice is not yeah yeah okay can you hear me now yes thank you good morning good evening good day everybody uh, as sandeep alluded to this acquisition will form the foundation of our new microsoft business unit two com- two teams coming together data glove and persistent bringing in complementary skills little overlap that will strengthen the muscle the solution the transformation solutions that we've been taking out to the market over the last few quarters and years with this coming together with data glove coming together we will be able to provide transformation solutions across the offerings and will be a one stop shop for our customers who seek to go the microsoft way whether they are solutions related to cloud infrastructure and security or whether they are solutions related to data and analytics or workforce productivity or modern workplace solutions our underlying principles of the microsoft business unit remain the same to capture the market that we have been doing but to do it more aggressively to bolster our existing capabilities by tucking in the skills and the expertise that data gloves brings in and to expand uh, our footprint in these customers remember that i has mentioned that we have complementary skills and complementary strengths we will we have experience with our existing several hundreds of customers that we are already working together in providing solutions other engineering solutions and infrastructure solutions i'm just making sure you can hear me because i see okay thank you a sneak preview to our ambition matrix just a sneak preview to our ambition matrix at the bottom of this chart you will see our core expertise that we bring to bear 
or that we have been bringing to bear, which is evident based on the progress or the growth that we've had over the last few quarters and years. We intend to bolt on Data Glove's expertise and bring in focus. When Sandeep said that we are going to, we are going to make sure that this Microsoft unit focuses on building capability, building solutions, and bringing in next-gen aspects of the solutions to our customers. Case in point, Sandeep mentioned about vertical, verticalized solutions, industry solutions. We, we want to, you know, we intend to build service catalogs that will make it easy for customers to consume some of the solutions that these hyperscalers rolled out, like Azure, Microsoft, Azure rolls out, making it easy through our experience, business experience and knowledge with our existing hundreds of customers. Last but not the least, we intend to do this across, across the breadth of solutions that, that are available and that our customers are looking for. A few representative data glove engagements, uh, be it transformation, uh, you know, getting a seat at the table at the largest telco transformation, one of the largest telco transformation in the industry, be it moving from legacy, moving legacy, uh, 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 legacy, doing legacy transformation for some of our customers or helping customers public sector or otherwise helping customers improve their adoption of cloud and make customer experience seamless for their end customers in turn. So with this, we will stop. We will be willing to take question answers. And before we go there, I have one other comment to make. So there has been some questions over the last you know, day or so about Data Glove's relationship with Trimax, as well as the Data Glove relationship with Ebex. So I want to clear one point here. The Data Glove relationship with Trimax was started in 2014. Trimax was a customer of Data Glove. 2014, Data Glove entered into a licensing agreement with Trimax to use the Trimax brand name in the Americas. In 2015, given the difficult times Trimax went through, Data Glove severed the relationship and let the agreement expire to both of the company's satisfaction. Subsequently, there has been no association between Data Glove and Trimax. As far as Ebix is concerned, Data Glove had set up a joint venture with Ebix to provide cloud services to Ebix customers last year. As a part of our diligence, our intent to acquire 100% of Data Glove's business, we had requested Data Glove to terminate the joint venture with Ebix, which was done in September 2021 providing a three month notice and concluded with that. So as of this point in time, to your inquiries, some of you who had asked about these two, there's no relationship that Data Glove has between themselves and Trimax and between themselves and Ebix, apart from a service provider relationship to Ebix and some of their customers. So hopefully that kind of clarifies and we do not expect Data Glove to have any adverse implications on its business on account of any of these past relationships. And we have done enough diligence and just to give you reassurance, any acquisition that we do, we have a slew of partners that we have who come with us for the diligence, whether it is a big five from a you know tax finance perspective, HR diligence and so on. And we have done our diligence pretty well over the past six months. And so rest assured, there's nothing between Trimax, Ebex and Data Glove that can come in the business way. So with this, we'll open for question answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question can raise your hand from the participants tab on your screen. Participants are requested to use headphone or earphone while asking a question. Participants are requested to ask a maximum of two questions at a time. For follow-up questions, please join the queue again. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Please note that this call is for 45 minutes only. First question is from Mr. Abhishek Bhandari. Yeah, hello. Hi, Sandeep. Uh, uh, my question, I have two questions actually. Uh, my first 
This question is, you know, you said uh, uh, Data Glove makes for Microsoft. So if you could elaborate your relationship with, you know, Microsoft, uh, you know, what what is the total revenue, uh, you know, Data uh, Data Gloves gets, uh, you know, from Microsoft, and what do they actually do for them? That's the first part. Second part is more on the, you know, the transaction multiple. Uh, you know, for a company which is, uh, you know, having a similar EBITDA like us, probably you know two times uh, trailing EV2 sales appears slightly on the lower side. So, uh, you know, what went behind this negotiation that you were able to uh, buy at this valuation? Those will be my sure. questions. Thank you. Sure. Sounds good, Abhishek. So, it's about seventy-five to eighty percent of the revenue of the company comes from Microsoft. And this has been the case in a little varying capacity for the last three years plus. Now, in terms of what they do with Microsoft, so Microsoft, when Microsoft goes for any large engagement, and so is the case with any of the hyperscalers, whether it is Google, whether it is you know Salesforce, usually you will see any of the hyperscalers take the bigger transformation programs and then partner with a set of companies for delivering those. So Data Glove is a partner to them, whether it is one of the largest telco transformations, one of the largest public sector transformations, one of the largest healthcare transformations, and so on. So that is the kind of work that they do. This can be this transformation can be on the infrastructure side, on the application side, whether it is application modernization, application lift shift, even at times doing you know refactoring and so on. So that's the nature of business at a high level. Now, in terms of EV to EBITDA and so on. So look, we started these discussions pretty much nine months back. And we have been able to work together to give each other the comfort level. And it's not just about the valuation that you give. The valuation, anybody can give a higher valuation and the earnouts and other conditions are also there. It is about the chemistry between the two teams, the confidence of meeting those goals, the confidence of meeting the entire transaction value, not just the hypothetical, the, the value that you may see between the base and the earnouts. And last but not the least, look, Every company has their own dynamics. So Data Glove has been a good partner to Microsoft. They have a certain sales channel. Companies that have a different sales channel get different valuations. So there are many such factors. But I think this is a good satisfactory multiple from their perspective, our perspective. And we all see good synergies in being able to build the synergies together and make their runouts happen and give all of them a good career path. So that's where it is. Thanks, Sandeep. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Mohit Jain. Uh, two questions again. One is a follow up of the previous one. So when you say seventy-five to eighty percent of the revenues are from Microsoft, that means the billing is happening through Microsoft, or is it directly supplying some software or services to Microsoft? So that was one. And if that is the case, then we should sort of classify that, that as high tech, or would you classify because case studies given are more on BFSI and other verticals. So that was one. And second, if you could give some color on the client buckets, like what kind of deals these guys sign, and uh, what kind of momentum are you seeing from an outlook perspective? Sure. So the first part, most of the revenue that is built to Microsoft. So I would say, the, let me even say this: two kinds of revenues from Microsoft. One is built to Microsoft where the end customer may be a telco, the end customer may be whatever, and it's basically under Microsoft. The second revenue is where Microsoft introduces Data Glove and then Data Glove directly goes. We have classified both as Microsoft revenue right now, but obviously there will be, as we go along, we will bifurcate it in industry verticals and so on and so forth. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Second, in terms of momentum, they have seen a significant momentum. The earnouts are based on 22.5% growth year on year. So that is the least that they are expected to achieve. Obviously, you know, the synergy revenues are on top of it. And if you look at our own history of taking acquisitions of late, if I was to take the example of Capyot, which we did about a year back, I can say with confidence, we have been able to take their capabilities, our real estate. We have a very good set of customers, established relationships. We have been able to double the revenue of Capyot within a year. I'm not saying we'll double the revenue of Data Glove within a year, but the fact is, our go-to market is fairly strong. We have proven over the last eight quarters our ability to grow our organic revenues with a small sliver of inorganic. We are at 36% year on year. So think about taking capabilities of a data glove, real estate of a persistent and multiplexing it. And our customers are you know, absolutely gung-ho about their transformation journeys. And they are very enthusiastic. In, even in the last one day, we have got very enthusiastic response about the acquisition. So we are hopeful of carrying forward the momentum and obviously, it'll take a little bit of time to integrate, 
but we are very hopeful that the acquisition will bode well for us as an organization the second one on client bucket sizing anything on the contract size so look the contract sizes vary the top 5 7 customers may be bigger customers which may be anywhere between let's say 2 3 4 million dollar plus on an annual basis the highest may be even in the range of 8 to 10 million dollars and then there is a slew of customers between the category of 1 to 2 category of below 1 given the size of the company but given the capabilities that's where the combination makes sense where we will be able to scale this to a bigger level understood sir thank you thank you next question is from abhishek shindadkar yeah hi uh, thanks for the opportunity and congrats on the acquisition uh, two questions first uh, you know uh, you highlighted you've been discussing uh, uh, you know this acquisition with nine months in uh who are the competition involved if any um, you know given that the technology uh, you know is in high demand i'm sure there could have been other uh, you know participants as well uh, the second thing is um, now in the last 6 uh, 8 months we have digested good amount of acquisition uh, so you know what's the strategy here uh, we have consumed a good amount of cash as well uh, so what's the strategy going ahead uh, you know i'm sure it must be consuming a management bandwidth as well uh, so that and just a part of it is uh, how do we plan to fund it uh, do we also plan to raise uh, you know any borrowings for this or it will be all cash on that thank you for taking my question so bunch of questions if i miss anything please remind me so so first look our philosophy on acquisitions has been this while we encourage a lot of inbound acquisition you know queries that come to us for people wanting to get acquired through various you know sources deal advisors and investment bankers and so on we have been trying to go after the targets that we want to go after the value is not in when somebody has already prepared a company to sell change their website and made it to look you know world's greatest technologies and you know hired an investment banker to clean up their act and then punt them over for you know multiples ev multiples of 3 4 whatever at that point in time you have a diamond which is already polished we are going after companies that are you know having the value that we want may not be the fully you know polished diamond but that's where the value creation has to happen for our investors and that's where we have to be able to get a ev to the you know revenue side at a multiple that we want but the capabilities that we want and we know how to go to market so for the last 8 quarters 10 quarters our credibility of you know scaling revenues our confidence of scaling revenues ourselves gives us the confidence to go after companies proactive data club was not you know basically being shopped around by an investment banker we reached out we did an analysis of the market we scanned the market for companies that are good partners to various people like an ibm and that's where you know in the financial services ftm and other things came sci next one is you know the proactive outreach for data club where we wanted a strong microsoft partner that could help us scale the thing and there are similar other pursuits that we have done including capiot which was not necessarily an investment banker led we welcome investment banker led deals but usually they are where the value is already you know kind of at a much higher level so this was that is the reason it was a nine month pursuit it took us time to convince each other that we can work with each other it makes sense for them makes sense for us and you know that's where the various things are so now in terms of the cash consumption and so on we are sitting on 275 million dollars give or take of cash before this transaction so we we are not necessarily consuming all the cash and the cash just remember what sunil said there is a certain amount up front there is a certain amount in earnouts over 2 years there is a certain amount in retention over 3 years so we are being prudent in making sure whatever we are lining up at acquisitions whether it was capiot sci shri partners data club and maybe more you know we are making sure we have enough cash we are preserving cash to be able to do this and still have a reasonable amount of cash on our balance sheets and do not forget we can today go out in the markets and there are many people who would love to give us debt or work with us to finance our transactions given the strong balance sheet that we carry given the strong growth momentum that we have now in terms of management bandwidth rest assured you know the acquisitions that we are doing they are spread over in different buckets so for example capiot was in data and integration sci was in financial services vertical data glove is in our, our cloud business 
there are different leaders responsible for this so we have the management bandwidth to take it and we are not distracted if we were distracted we would not be delivering the results that we have been delivering over the last many quarters so we are being prudent on how we go after which target and these are more or less proactive outreach so that we get a better deal and we are not necessarily you know distracted we are going in a focused manner on what we want to acquire why we want to acquire in line with the ambition metrics and the markets that we want to capture so that's the rationale in terms of cash being deployed uh, sunil please go ahead whether we are using internal accruals and answer yes so vishik uh, for this deal we plan to draw about 35 million uh, worth of borrowing and as you know this is only towards the funding of the upfront the subsequent uh, payouts will be funded internally okay great and the uh, rationale for that is very simple the rationale for that is our internal you know return on capital versus the cost of borrowing from the market it makes more sense for us to use the debt while preserving the cash perfect well, great to hear thoughts thank you for taking my question thank you thank you next question is from dipesh mehta yeah thanks for the opportunity a uh, couple of question first about one clarification you indicated uh, ev2 revenue multiple of 1.95 Based on the EV and revenue number indicated, it works out to be lower. So, is there a difference between gross revenue and net revenue? Any just can you help us understand that arithmetic? Second question is about uh, how big would be Microsoft practice post the transaction? Uh, sure. Third question is about M and A gifts. You indicated five buckets where we want to build capability. Give some sense about three bucket AWS and Google Cloud. We have not highlighted much. If you can provide whether we want to build that capability through M and A or organic, thanks. Sure. So let me let me answer two questions and I'll lean to Sunil for the EV by revenue part. So on the Microsoft practice side, uh, you know, if we were to just look at the cloud part of it, the work that we do in cloud and you know things like data, AI, and security, and not just not include the development work that we do using .NET and so on and so forth. If I'm just looking at cloud. related work today it is about 25 million dollars only on azure and azure related things combined would be about 75 million dollars to start with and then we have aspirations to grow it fairly significantly and that is just the azure side i'm not including other clouds now in terms of your question about aws and google we didn't say anything about it in terms of you know how we are growing so two parts to it organically we are definitely investing and maybe we'll do a token acquisition in one of the other two and so that is where it is but all our attempt is this is a high growth market we have done very well if you look at our product engineering business there is a significant amount of product engineering business we do on these clouds so and we are seeing the pattern if we were to see the tea leaves that are there it only beckons that we go with urgency in these markets and we have we have taken steps like this before as well four quarters back in october november december of 20 Twenty. When we hired one thousand six forty two people, a lot of people said, "Why are you hiring so many people?" And our answer was, "We see the demand, and we also see attrition. We were the first ones to flag it. We want to be ahead of the curve. We are seeing this pattern. We are seeing this pattern to be an important thing for persistent to remain at the growth cusp, at the technology cusp, and be with our customers where they need us. So we'll further enhance organically, inorganically. If we do anything inorganic, we'll do a session like this, and we'll update you." Sunil, if you can answer on the EV by rep. Yeah, yes. So this uh, revenue has a small component of about five to six percent of revenue, which we have made an adjustment in our own minds that we would like the revenue to be reckoned as forty-six or thereabouts. That's why you get a higher revenue multiple. That's we look at it in that sense. While the revenue is there, but that's a way the revenue composition is. Sorry, so I am not clarity. Why we why we are looking at that way is because certain part of revenue may be with other service providers, which may go away given that we have acquired the company. So we are factoring for that, and so on. It may not happen, but we are just being conservative on that. That's it. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dipesh. Next question is from Sandeep Shah. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, 
just sandeep a strategic question uh, in a long term we will have two relationship which would be big one is ibm and second being microsoft so don't you believe there would be a renewal related risk where our bargaining power may be slightly lower or you believe the kind of work which we do uh, it will have an equal opportunity on bargaining on both the sides you and uh, the uh, partners as a whole okay so so in the longer run we will continue to have five relationships not two five <laughs> salesforce is already at a clip much beyond 100 million dollars in terms of what we do with them and with their customers and by the way they are a very strong partner it's a very tight partnership there with ibm as well we do multiple things with microsoft this will be a business unit similarly you know maybe down the line we will announce google business unit aws business unit as well and look at it this way today if you look at industry leaders whether you look at you know arvind krishna whether you look at you know satya nadella ibm and microsoft ceos they don't look at each other as competition this it's a competition red hat today works as seamlessly with aws or azure or gcp and they are also working with ibm cloud and they are looking at aws azure and others as partners similarly you know each of these technology players works with many different gsis and companies like ourselves and it is only prudent for people like us if tomorrow we are coming to you and you are the customer we have to be vendor neutral we have to do what is best for you as the customer to be your trusted advisor so we will need to have a slew of these relationships and each of these principles respects that they understand it and even when we did this announcement for example i am pretty sure based on our discussions with our principals whether it's an ibm and others they are looking at this as very good synergistic thing for them and they are looking at persistent to take their technologies along with these even more so i don't think there's an issue in getting renewals or you know building these partnerships i don't think this is one or the other these are one and the other if we have to be genuine to ourselves our customers and even these principals okay so i don't think we have any worries on this just just to follow up, uh, uh, sunil sir if you can make us understand to whom the earn out payments will go because we are not buying a legal entity we are buying the business so uh, to whom the earn out payments will go so these will be to the founders actually of data globe so they are coming on board with us so you are right the this an uh, asset purchase is not an entity purchase so the shareholders are not entities and and so the earn out of earn outs and retention so retention is broad based a certain amount of earn outs is also to the other key management employees so there is a certain factoring that has been done on that so there is there is a good amount that will go to the founders certain amount that will go to the key employees from earn out and the retention is based on a broad based retention of the key employee base that we want to carry forward these are the senior leaders in the company across functions okay and those founders will also come to persistent role and they are largely the shareholders of this data globe is it fair way to assume yes that's, that's it. okay okay and just on this 35 million dollar debt will it be a foreign currency debt or uh, will yeah, it be this will be a foreign currency debt and like we have done in the earlier case it will be a amortizing kind of structure okay and last thing on 70 bits amortization impact so if i do a backward calculation it looks like uh, if a seven year amortization assumption is there this may work out to be 55% of the 85% in which would be going to the uh, acquired amortization asset so is it that high uh, will it be that big see what happens actually uh, that in the first year we are not factoring the benefit out of synergy revenues which will have to be worked upon as we integrate the business so you are right to that extent there is a potential for this to moderate but we don't want to right now in the first year we definitely be conscious of how much headroom we have to create in margins to absorb this impact this is only a headwind for margins right we have to work on several things to ensure that we actually don't have a dip in margins so we need to be conscious of that and have the line of sight but approximately percentage wise how much value of the ev which will go into acquired amount acquired intangibles it would be roughly 45% okay thanks thanks and all the best gentlemen thank you thank you that was the last question i would now like to hand conference back to mr sandeep kalra for the closing comments thank you thank you all for your time today and uh, 
you know, we are very hopeful with this acquisition and with the series of acquisitions that we have done, which are smaller token acquisitions. We are very hopeful of building our capabilities and scaling our revenues and building on the organic strength that we have shown. So please stay tuned and we'll pro you know report the progress as we report the quarterly earnings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Mindtree Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now exit the call. So moderator, on behalf of Persistent, we conclude <laughs> the call. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See you. Thank you.